This is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Victor. Hello. Hi, Christian. How are you? I just like to point out. So, like, like, thanks for joining so late. Uh, it's <laughs> in fact, I was looking. I'm talking to somebody in Sweden, and it's 4 p.m. Mountain U.S. Yeah, so it's it's midnight there. So, thank you for joining. Yeah, it's actually you know it, it's Tuesday here now. So yeah. <laughs> well, there there you go. Well, yeah. that's, uh, well, so why don't you introduce yourself? Who you are, what you do, and uh, go from there. Yeah, sure. Uh, so as stated, my name is uh, Victor Hedberg. Uh, I work as a cybersecurity consultant at a at a cybersecurity firm based in Sweden. Uh, I'm a, a cloud and data center management MVP. Yep. But that's only because I'm contributing in the enterprise security category. So mm -hmm. that's the that, that's the reason why it's the, the the cloud and data center management because, you know, enterprise security is under cloud and data center management. It's always interesting to look, and in. that may shift and change as they kind of yeah. move pieces around. And I know it evolves and changes. That's uh, you know one of the I've, I've talked about this with a couple of inter interviews that I've done recently, but. You know, once you become an MVP, I mean, you may find that your own role and your job and what you're passionate about may evolve and change, but there's room for you to go and adopt and pick up other ideas. You could suddenly be focusing most of your time on Power Platform and then make a transition over being a business applications MVP, like that crazier things have happened. Or pick up a dual MVP. Yeah, exactly. I've, 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 I think... One of the one of the employees at my company used to be a dual MVP, uh, but I can't say that for certain. I, I I think there he's currently an enterprise mobility MVP, and I think he was in the cloud and data center management category as well before. Well, when you see somebody who is a dual MVP, or even I've uh, you know, run across and interviewed a couple that are are uh, I think two that are triple. Uh, focus areas. And there, one thing that we can all understand is that those people have no personal life. Yeah, because exactly. They're, exactly. Because they're constantly contributing. You know, they're doing things yeah. out of the community. So, yeah, uh, it's like, uh, you know, somebody, it's like a, a, a you know, a, that's out on the, um, uh, the, the front lines of a, of a war who's a medic. You know, they're like, you know, they're actively engaged. Yeah, to say the least. Right. <laughs> So, so, uh, so, how long have you been an MVP now? Uh, well, I, I got my award uh, on October first, so it's a little bit more than a month now. Congratulations! Still, yeah, I got the award package delivered, stuff like that. It, it kind of hasn't sunk in yet. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to, at, at some point, you know, I, well, I got the stickers now, so I, I put them on all over my laptop, stuff like that. So it kind of feels real, but yeah, at the same time, it kind of doesn't. And then I, so I realized, cause I, I have all of the uh, award, like the boxes, the renewals and stuff, and I have them in my closet and I've got all the stickers in there. I realize I have a stack of, of stickers <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, do I need to refresh? And things that I had put stickers on the year before still looks good. <laughs> uh, it goes to show the quality that goes into these. There stickers, you go. I guess. That's, that's right. <laughs> quality of the stickers good job microsoft on that so. yeah exactly exactly so what, what was your path to becoming an mvp kind of what's your story well uh i i started uh proposing uh putting in you know uh, calls for uh, call for papers when it yeah. comes to uh, cybersecurity related topics uh and a bunch of them got caught up and i guess word kind of spread from there so i, I started talking a lot with the with the uk community people uh, got invited to some of those events. Uh, actually, got to speak at an at an in person conference event uh, earlier in October, which was oh, wow. kind of weird given you know the, the <laughs> time has passed. Hey, so I, I I spoke at an event. I attended one in September last year. Yeah. So when when we thought things were opening up again, and yeah. then it you know, <laughs> doubled back, you know. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, it didn't become a super spreader event, and it was fine. But it just was poorly attended for some reason. Yeah, I'm hard to see why. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's so, a, I, but it's good to uh, 
good to get in front of the community. I mean, it, it, it thinks, I mean, honestly, the, you know, for new MVPs, especially it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, there's certain amount of things that you can do when it's virtual, but uh, I mean, you lose a lot of the, uh, I don't know, the, the benefit of, of having the award of having the recognition as being an MVP, if you can't get out and meet new people and have conversations. Um, yeah, but exactly. We're just kind of hibernating now. So it'll open back up and we'll get back into the swing of things. Yeah, you know, in Sweden, we, we lifted restrictions back in the end of September, I think. So uh, things kind of, you know, have panned out uh, in our favor so far. So yeah. uh, my company is actually hosting an in-person event, well, later today for me, <laughs> uh, uh, where I'm talking about cybersecurity stuff with one of my colleagues who's also an MVP. Well, there's a lot, uh, you know, uh, with Ignite now behind us, like the, there were a bunch of announcements and things that are, uh, what kind of stood out? What were you uh, most excited to see and talk about? Uh, the the, the rebranding of <laughs> certain products once more, you yeah. know, uh, that, 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 that always is like a, a monkey wrench thrown but, at but us. That's part of the everything old is becomes new again. It is rebranding. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, exactly. Just like with uh, the the company behind Facebook, you know, they're not Facebook anymore. They're Meta. <laughs> That's right. So they're yeah. yeah, they're bigger than that. It's a it's a bigger theme. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, what what stood out for me was that uh, the security track was uh, it got even more highlighted than Ignite uh, yeah. a couple of years back. So it really goes to show that Microsoft really really are developing good security tools and they're focusing heavily on cybersecurity at the moment which I find uh, super interesting. And I think is, I think that is uh, what's needed right now. Yeah, there's Microsoft is in the news about, you know, at least once a month, once or twice a month where they're thwarting something and, uh, you know, or they're you know, involved in and, and helping out at least with the U S government. There's something that this that's been going on around that. I know that the, so I was in a, on a panel earlier today with a, a user group on uh um, the, the Minneapolis Microsoft 365 and doing a post event post ignite panel and uh, it, and I know that there's a whole category it's just a bunch of announcements and things that are around it it's not my space I didn't yeah. really pay attention to all the announcements I know that I, I probably people at my team we've got our, our chief security officer probably be very sad to hear me say that <laughs> but uh, except the fact that Microsoft is focusing on uh, opening up multi-cloud and realizing that they need to be, you know, actively working with, you know, competing cloud solutions, but by providing solutions, because the reality is every one of us, all companies, we're, we're all multi-cloud. Like we're, there, nobody just works within the Microsoft stack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think the, the, the challenge that, that lays ahead is trying to find some kind of, you know, how do we keep our security posture uh, being in a multi-cloud environment and when we also have the, the hybrid part of it to adhere to as well. So it really, it, it kind of gets mesmerizing at, at some point, you know, we all, you, know, you have all these dots that you're trying to connect, but yeah, uh, it's super interesting. And I think, I think we'll, we'll see real cool things happen uh, when it comes to the, the capabilities of Microsoft security. Yep. You know, something that jumped out to me, I don't remember who was talking as part of the Ignite keynotes, but they even made the comment of, of uh, being careful with their words and to be a little humbled about cybersecurity and things going out there because they don't want somebody to be take that as a signal or a challenge to go and yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> even attack Microsoft even more. But I mean, I, I look at it just from an Office 365 customer as, as a client for my, for my own tenant. Uh, and I'm sure my company sees the same things. I'm amazed and astounded at the volume of attacks that are against my tenant and what, what yeah. Office 365 thwarts. It's just yeah, crazy exactly. numbers. And, uh, and, and exactly what you're describing. We're, we're seeing that on a day-to-day -day basis on all of our clients, you know, uh, signing attempts from all over the world because we're, we're now we're publicly facing our signing uh, prompts using the internet, right? So th there is no stopping us from uh, getting that Nigerian prince, if you want to, uh, try, trying to sign into your account. Uh, Victor, when somebody asks for your help, you know, you, you should help. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, not not if they're after, uh, asking about my credit card information. I won't. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No, it wasn't that. I I all I did was send five hundred dollars in Amazon gift cards to the email address. I mean, it was the only thing I could do to help. It's a prince in his own country. Come on, Victor. <laughs> No, but I think so. What was the bit, the latest news? Like Microsoft, I think it was like the, the like the largest DDoS attack that they had, you know, seen ever. Just some massive. Yeah, you know the, Yeah, you know the, the the records are being broken every year, every day. It seems uh, with yeah. ma massive ransomware attacks, massive DDoS attacks. Uh, there, there's just no end to it. We're we're kind of we're kind of pushing our luck right now with. Uh, a couple of the, the big bad guys in ransomware operators uh, out in Eastern Europe getting picked out by uh, local authorities. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're, we're hoping to see some kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, positive consequences falling from that. But, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a never ending battle. And the only way we can do it is if we work together, basically. So that's why I'm so proud of, of what my company is doing, where we're actively, actively like promoting uh, community work. So we're, we're trying to help our customers uh, implement a safe solution and also understand why it is a safe solution and how they can use it. So we're not just, you know, we're, we're not just deploying a solution and then like we're done. So we're trying to, trying to educate each and every one of our customers. And like the event taking place in, well, seven hours from now, or sorry, nine hours from now. Uh, it's just a, you know, these are our insights. We're trying to spread the knowledge, spread the words. So we focus a lot of, uh, a lot of what we're doing on, on the value we provide rather than, you know, strict consulting services, because that's not how we roll. Well, also, I mean, you guys have to stay on top of everything because it's constantly changing. You know, yeah. the, the, you know, when they fail at the attacks, they could go and try something else. So there's, it's a, unfortunately or fortunately, it's a growing business. It's a, it's a good space to be in from yeah. a business, business, from a partner yeah, standpoint. From, yeah. From a business and from a partner standpoint, absolutely. You know, the, the, the revenue we're, we're creating is, is insanely huge, but you know, it, it all comes from a cost at some yeah. point. Uh, we we've been lucky so far here in Sweden that we haven't had like uh, health services being compromised in that way. Like I know you guys in the in the U.S. Uh, have been attacked uh, on several occasions, and yeah. it really goes to show that you know there are there is no honor among thieves, right? <laughs> there there there's no you know there's no line they won't cross to to try to get their money, right? Well, it's, it, you know, uh, so I, my, you know, personal experience, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, I don't have any uh, major of my, you know, individually, my, uh, uh, you know, assets, online assets that, uh, like, I have my, my backups, I mean, it'd be more of an inconvenience, it wouldn't destroy anything, you know, take, take down, but uh, my former company, uh, uh, my independent business, uh, two of my clients that experienced ransomware, one mm -hmm. that just took the hit and lost a couple days of, of data, but they were otherwise they were prepared for that, and the other one that they there was a I don't know you know flaw there's something that you know happened but they ended up paying the ransom, yeah. and they they had no other option but to to go and do that and you know got their data back. But um, yeah, it it's uh, it's it's a lot more common than I think we even hear about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we we only hear about and all these numbers about you know. Uh, oh, the the ransomware industry is overtaking the the drug industry when it comes to you know, it comes to revenue and all of that. Th that's only the the visible cases, right? We don't yeah. see the invisible cases where you don't want the bad press because you just got hit by ransomware and you want to pay the ransom to to get out get out somewhat scot free. So yeah, I I think that the problem is even larger than most of us would 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 get at. Uh, well, and I, I, I have some insights, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't publicly disclose all well, of it. Well, there was some, uh, so I, I participated in a, uh, in a webinar, uh, two months ago, and there's some stats that was shared. I don't have them in front of me, but it, it's, it, you know, the, the vast majority are not these large companies that make the news that do the PR around it, that have the formal responses around there. 
it's small to medium sized businesses. And the, the cost per employee cost is like 10, 20 times the cost to the large companies. And so it, that, that's the thing where, I mean, I, I look, if somebody had ha something had happened, if I didn't have all of my data out in the cloud, if I didn't have those protections in place for my little standalone business, it would have just put me out of business. If I lost all that data, I would have been done. Yeah. You know, and, and so it, how, how do you then measure that cost? It's, you know, it's pretty simple, zero income coming in. So, yeah, exactly. And, you know, that, that's why it's so rewarding working in the, those incidents where you actually, you actually get, get, get to feel the, the happiness from coming from the, from the client in that case, when, you know, we can come forth and say that, Hey, uh, we know you've been hit. It's real bad, but you know, we'll help you through this and we'll, provide you with crisis management, all of that. And once we actually get them up and running again, it's just, you know, <laughs> bursting with tears and like, oh my God, you helped us yeah. so much. And it, it's so rewarding and it really makes it all worthwhile. You know, one, one of the most entertaining uh, uh, presenters within, uh, over in the office apps and services side. So I came up through the, you know, within the SharePoint community and kind of that side of things. So I have a really good friend who's really well known in the security space over within you know, uh, collaboration and uh, content management is Liam Cleary. Uh, and so he does a lot of stuff We're based in the DC area. So he has a lot of customers, but he used to do a session, uh, which there's still recording his, uh, recordings out there. He'd always preface his session by saying, uh, if there's anybody in the room, if I, if I show uh, some of the examples, I'm going to show live environments that are broken, that I can, you know, hack. And the, his session was like, so you, you think you can't hack SharePoint. And, and then he would go in and just public facing, but SharePoint based sites and show how they were not adequately architected and that they were ex, you know, ex easily accessible with free tools, things without there. I saw it twice where he gave the session in DC, both times, somebody in the room like gasped. <laughs> and uh, one time a woman said, that's my company. And, and so he stopped presenting, walked outside with her, had a conversation and mm -hmm. talked to him. Like, I was like, what did you talk about? He's like, look, he's like, I gave her my information. I said, like, I'd be happy to walk through. He says, and he kept saying over and over again, like everything I'm doing here is legal. If I were to take a screenshot or pull down any content, I would be breaking the law. He's like, but this is, it's, it's, it's broken. It says, I'd be happy to tell your team exactly what I did to get in there and do that. Well, I'm just saying that there's a big business and people love that kind of theater, that kind of presentation to show people what, like what you're doing wrong. Do you do a session like that where you walk through and, and yeah, and you know, a uh, friendly uh, hack? For, for, <laughs> yeah. For, from, uh, from, for my session tomorrow, I actually have a demo environment set up because I don't want to password spray one of my clients, but sure. uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the tools I'm using could, uh, I'm happy to provide afterwards, you know, just try this out on your own and see if you get any hits, because if I can do it, so can you, because it's basically a PowerShell script and you know, looping through the, the users in some variables with some passwords and trying to brute force their way into uh, the basic off <laughs> side of Office 365. And it really goes to show that it, it, it adds like a second layer of your presentation. I think that, you know, th this, these techniques are, are readily available and everyone can use them. Like right. I, I can get my, my six-year-old son to run a PowerShell script, you know, just press enter. <laughs> well, this is uh well, that, see that, that's a great, so are you recording your session for the, tomorrow's event? Uh, I, yeah, it's being live streamed, uh, on the, onto our platform. I don't know if it will be, uh, I think it's behind a paywall, some kind yeah, of- Yeah, I mean, because this recording will be live, you know, the, it will have already happened weeks in the uh, you know, back, but I think yeah. I think we're like six, seven weeks out on, on recordings, but um, yeah, I mean, so is that something if they go in and search on your name, could they find, you know, sessions like that uh, available on YouTube? Uh, well, not right now, but I'm, I'm uh, uh, currently discussing with some of my friends to maybe like do a, uh, a Microsoft 365 defenders hero to hero kind of video series uh, yeah. where we'll touch on touch on all of these points uh, and help 
every one of you to you know secure successfully secure your Azure environment and your hybrid infrastructure as well. That was one of the announcements too, is around Defender and availability through other um, licensing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and we got some some interesting news for the the SMB segment with uh, the small medium businesses using uh, Microsoft 365 Business Premium, I think. Right. Get all the the EDR uh, capabilities from Defender for Endpoint, which is hugely important <laughs> in this right. day and age. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, my session uh, will be more about you know, getting back to the basics because I'm I'm getting kind of fed up with all of these. Oh, you know, oh, we got this fancy uh, cloud access security broker system, or we got this fancy EDR system. We need to take a step back and really, uh, you know, tick all the boxes in our basic security hygiene first. Right. Then we yeah, can yeah. proceed on and go talk about EDRs and. Uh, sandboxing environments or what have you. That's always the the danger. I mean, I because I, I know you know it now is you know MVPs. I mean, we're we're always excited to talk about the net new, but when it's yeah. under premium licensing and things out there, like I, I I actually prefer not to talk like talk about that stuff. Hey, it's also available, but exactly to your point, to talk about okay, what do the majority of people have, what to go and talk about from that perspective, um, give people the options, show them kind of the the path forward if that's not sufficient what's the next step that they can do after that it's yeah, a lot more exactly. helpful for the majority of people exactly i, I totally agree and, and i'm trying to you know trying to show them all the all the uh, all the raisins and the cake if you want if you understand that the figure of speech you know pick the chocolate bit out of, right. chocolate bits out of the cake uh, to to save all the goodies uh, when it comes to the licensing part because it's a jungle but uh, if I can show people like, like, oh, if you use Defender for Identity in this uh, way, you can actually get alerts on when somebody gets added into the domain admin uh, group. And if you use the Defender for Endpoint integration, you get a whole lot of, of more visibility into it as well. So that's basically what I'm trying to promote as well. You know, that there really is a value into stepping up on your licensing game because the the features that are there uh, yep. they're they're not just there because they're costly uh, just look at all the the gartner or the uh, insights from other marketing uh, companies like the microsoft really really are, are taking a position like uh, a cybersecurity leader uh, in these days but that it just feels like you're signing yourself up for building a very hefty infographic around you know what lights up with each of those I, you know, microsoft probably has that that's out there in a couple different places already but yeah you uh, know the the i i i regularly reference uh, aaron dinage work uh, his github repo is amazing when it comes to you know trying to figure out oh this bit oh or this bit these bits and pieces are represented in these kind of licensings uh, Aaron Dana just uh, GitHub repo when it comes to Microsoft 365 licensing is a godsend. I've said it. Go, I've said I, it. I'll have to go track that down. If you send me the link, I'll add it into the the blog post as well that you yeah, mentioned. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Well, Victor, really uh, one great to meet you, and um, hopefully, as a new MVP, things start to open up here. I, I think it was just in the news today. Um, that uh, that you know that they're they dropping uh, the the a lot of the travel restrictions uh, for yeah, people. Yeah, I read that as well. You know, international. Exactly. Uh, so so that, finger, fingers crossed for a, a, an in person MVP summit. I right? sure hope so. We we need to have it. You know, it's been two years, so it's time yeah. to get back together. So uh, looking forward to that. But uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for learning more. For for uh, so I'll have the blog post that's out there for people that are watching this. Find us out on social or out on YouTube. Then you can go to buckleyplanet.com and I'll have a blog post. You can look for uh, Victor's name, search on it. You'll be able to find it with the links there. But just for those that are listening to the podcast, people want to find you, reach out to you. What are the best ways to reach you? Uh, the best ways to reach me are predominantly uh, through Twitter. So my, my, my Twitter handle is uh, like, how, how would you pronounce my last name if you see I, it on your screen there? I just say Hedberg. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's basically my Twitter handle. So it's at Hedberg, uh, spelled like H-E-A-D-B-U-R-G-H. So at Hedberg, go follow me, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, 
feel free uh, all the links uh to my other social connections are on oh, well, my twitter page as well awesome and uh well victor really appreciate your time and uh hopefully we'll connect you <laughs>